Since the early days of aviation, pilots have operated in a standard airport traffic pattern. Whether flying in a small uncontrolled airport or a large hub, this pattern is nearly always the same, as are the types of landings pilots can perform. My name is Kyle Wanek. I'm an air traffic control student here at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. Controlling VFR traffic begins with an understanding of how the traffic pattern and landings work, and that is what we're going to talk about today on ATCAST. Dan Lindsay is joining me today from our control tower simulator to explain more. Dan? Thanks Kyle. My name is Dan Lindsay. In this episode we're going to talk about the VFR traffic pattern from the controller's perspective along with the different kinds of landings pilots can perform. If you've already got some experience flying, this will be a review, but if you don't have any time in the cockpit, hopefully this will give you an idea of what to expect when you're working in the tower. Before an aircraft enters a traffic pattern, it may proceed to one or more VFR reporting points. Not all airports have these, but many do. They are predetermined locations outside the control tower's airspace, which are often easily recognizable landmarks that controllers can see from the tower, such as a building or lake. These reporting points are generally named after the landmark in question. In addition to alerting the tower to incoming traffic, reporting points help controllers organize the VFR aircraft before they even enter tower's airspace. Once at the reporting point, the pilot will contact the control tower and receive pattern entry instructions. A normal VFR traffic pattern consists of five legs. I'll start with a downwind leg because this is usually where aircraft will enter the pattern. It is flown parallel to the runway, about half a mile to a mile from the runway, opposite to the landing direction. Next is the base leg, where the aircraft turns to a course that is about perpendicular with the landing runway. After the base leg, the aircraft turns onto final and begins the final descent for landing. The next leg of the traffic pattern is the upwind leg, which the aircraft flies after takeoff, followed by the crosswind leg, which takes the aircraft on a perpendicular course away from the runway. After the crosswind leg, the aircraft turns onto the downwind leg and the process begins again. Making multiple passes in the traffic pattern is called closed traffic. A standard traffic pattern consists of left-hand turns, but this can vary from airport to airport. Those with parallel runways will have both a left-hand pattern and a right-hand pattern. Other considerations such as terrain, obstacles, or noise abatement procedures might result in a non-standard pattern and controllers can change the direction of the pattern to accommodate other traffic or if a pilot requests it. All this happens at what's called traffic pattern altitude, or TPA, which is usually 1,000 feet AGL, but can vary depending on the airport. When aircraft depart the pattern, they generally do so on the upwind leg, either on a straight out departure or on a 45 degree turn from the upwind leg. The direction of this turn depends on the direction of the traffic pattern. Generally speaking, aircraft will use what's called a standard entry onto the downwind leg. A standard entry means that the aircraft will join the downwind leg at midfield, which is a point at the middle of the runway, from a 45 degree angle to the downwind course. During this leg, the pilot will begin slowing down to an appropriate traffic pattern speed and start configuring the aircraft for landing, which may include setting flaps and lowering the landing gear. When preparing to turn base, the pilot will select what's called an abeam point, this is usually the landing threshold of the runway, but if the pilot is following other traffic, that traffic will become the abeam point. Unless instructed to do otherwise, the pilot will turn onto the base leg when the aircraft is about 45 degrees past the abeam point. During the base leg, the pilot will start slowing down to approach speed and begin turning onto final and lining up with the runway. The base leg will normally put the aircraft on a half mile to a mile final. Once on final, the pilot will reduce power to maintain an appropriate final approach speed, set the final landing configuration, and perform either a landing or a go-around. If the aircraft does anything other than a full stop landing, it will fly the upwind leg. This leg is flown on the same heading as the runway to about half a mile past the departure end, unless instructed otherwise by the tower controller. The pilot will then begin the turn onto the crosswind leg. Once the aircraft reaches a point about half a mile to a mile from the runway, the pilot will turn and join the downwind leg. 
Up next, we'll take a look at the four types of landings pilots can perform, and we'll see what you can expect pilots to do during each kind of landing. How do aircraft enter a traffic pattern when conducting a standard entry? A. At midfield, 90 degrees to the downwind course. B. At the departure end of the runway, 45 degrees to the downwind course. C. At the approach end of the runway, 90 degrees to the downwind course. D. At midfield, 45 degrees to the downwind heading. The answer is D. A standard pattern entry is made at midfield on a heading that is 45 degrees from the downwind course. True or false, the controller can determine the direction of the traffic pattern. The answer is true. Controllers can change the direction of a traffic pattern to accommodate arriving and departing aircraft, or if the pilot requests it. There are four kinds of landings pilots can perform when working in the pattern. The first type is a full stop landing. In this type of landing, the pilot touches down and taxis clear of the runway with the intention of parking the aircraft. The phraseology for clearing an aircraft for this type of landing is cleared to land. The second is called a touch and go. This type of landing requires the pilot to touch down on the runway, configure the aircraft for takeoff, and lift off again without stopping or exiting the runway. The phraseology for this type of landing is cleared touch and go. The third type of landing is called a stop and go. In this type of landing, the aircraft touches down on the runway and comes to a complete or near complete stop and takes off again. The phraseology for clearing an aircraft for a stop and go is cleared stop and go. The final type of landing really isn't a landing at all. It's called a low approach, and pilots may request this type of landing if they want to practice procedures like go arounds. In this type of landing, the aircraft approaches as if it will land, but does not touch down on the runway surface. The phraseology to clear someone for a low approach is cleared low approach. Pilots can and probably will request different kinds of landings when operating in the pattern. They may also request what's called the option. With the option, the pilot can execute any type of landing they want on that particular pass, and they don't have to let the controller know what kind of landing they will do. Pilots must initiate a request for the option, and it must be approved by the controller. You can do so by saying cleared for the option or option approved. Since you don't know what the pilot will do when cleared for the option, be careful when approving this request. Keep in mind other traffic, either in the pattern or inbound on an instrument or visual approach. If a pilot requests the option and you cannot approve it, say unable option and then clear them for a different landing. Alternatively, you can clear a pilot for the option and restrict a certain type of landing by saying unable in the type of landing, other options approved. Coming up next, we'll do a brief review of what we talked about in this episode. In which type of landing does the aircraft touch down on the runway and reconfigure for takeoff either without slowing down or with a minimum reduction in speed on the runway? A. Touch and go. B. Stop and go. C. Full stop. D. Low approach. This type of landing is called a touch and go. What does the option allow a pilot to do? A. Only a landing specified by the controller. B. Only a landing requested by the pilot. C. Any landing as long as the pilot advises the controller of which landing will be done. Or D. Any landing the pilot wants to do. The answer is D. The option allows a pilot to perform any kind of landing without having to advise the tower. Now for a quick review. A traffic pattern consists of five legs, downwind, base, final, upwind, and crosswind. A standard traffic pattern uses left turns, but patterns with right turns may also be used. These non-standard patterns may be in use because of parallel runways, noise abatement procedures, or terrain and other obstacles. While in the pattern, aircraft operate at traffic pattern altitude, or TPA, which is normally 1,000 feet AGL, but may vary from airport to airport. Pilots can perform four types of landings, full stop, touch and go, stop and go, and low approach. 
The option allows the pilot to perform his or her choice of landing without having to advise the tower of which landing will be conducted. A request for the option must be initiated by the pilot. That's it from the tower simulator. Kyle, back to you. Thanks, Dan. On behalf of you and the Air Traffic Control, the Student Air Traffic Controller Association and the Aerospace Network, thank you for watching. My name is Kyle Warner. Frequency change approved. Learn more about UND Air Traffic Control and watch more episodes of ATCAST by logging on to www.undsatka.org. Students may interactively test their knowledge by taking the ATCAST quizzes on SATCA's Easy LMS page. ATCAST can also be downloaded for free to your portable media device. Just search for ATCAST on iTunes U.